All right, guys. Good Thursday for us. Um, worked a lot of red zone against a team that I think is probably one of the best, not only run game offenses, but one of the best fade throwing teams you'll ever see. With those big targets, uh, I've seen them try a fade up to four times in a row uh, versus Oregon State last year. So, you know, we did a lot of preparation for that as well as the run game. Health-wise, uh, held a couple guys back today just to see if we can get them even more healthy. Uh, held Toa back today, uh, gave Chuma uh, some limited work, cut him back just a hair, uh, Austin Jackson just a hair, and uh, we'll see uh, where they get to tomorrow. But uh, hopefully all of them will be good and ready to roll. That, any questions? I know Austin didn't practice yesterday. What's going on with him? Uh, he's got a little bit of a um, tendonitis in the knee. And uh, the ankle is getting better. It's more just a little bit tender in the knee with some tendonitis. So you expect him to play on? Uh, I, he, I think he's going to be available. Uh, he looked good today. We'll we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Well, Nico didn't practice Tuesday, or Wednesday. Yeah, he's got an AC sprain of the shoulder. I don't think he'll make it for this game. What's key to defending those jump balls? So, um, what are you emphasizing with the DBs? Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm puffing and puffing. We were out there working after practice on it with Devin Williams and and a couple of the wideouts. It's, you know, really, you know, it's so hard down there um, because I think they do such a great job of throwing the ball based off leverage um, and and how you're playing them. Um, the other thing, like I've said with KJ before, his number one thing that I think he does a phenomenal job with is whether it's the deep ball or whether it's a red zone fade, he leaves the ball in bounds. He lets his guys make plays. You don't see overthrows. You don't see missed chances. I mean, he gives his kids the opportunity to make a play each and every time. And usually they're making it or they're getting PIs, you know, and we've got to make sure that we're not handsy and that we see the ball and play the ball. Um, we're hooked to the man, but we've got to see the ball and play it at its highest point because if you don't, they're taller than you. You mentioned earlier this week that Stanford's kind of become more of a passing team where they've kind of evolved a little bit, I think. Uh, I wouldn't say they're a passing team. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're more balanced. Mm -hmm. You know, in our first time that we played them, um, you know, they weren't making third downs as well in the first game, in the passing game. Now, you know, KJ, a year under his belt, um, you know, we faced him in that second game. If you remember, we had Keller the first game, KJ the second game. And now a year worth of experience for KJ, you could see it show up at the San Diego State game. You know, he's hitting the right targets, he's finding the one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and he's making the most. Um, so if the run game's not going, they can look up and throw for 300, and that's what makes him even more dangerous now. It used to be you could just stop the run, and it was hard. It was harder for him to make the third downs. Now they're confer converting at will, um, and I think it makes him a more dangerous offense. How important does that make your pass rush? Um, I think it's critical. If you watch the first game from last year, um, we got to the quarterback. We affected the quarterback. We got him off his spot. And um, that's always been key for us. I think it's the first down efficiency, get him in third and seven to ten, where the ball's got to be held longer. And hopefully the four-man rush, five-man rush, or six-man pressure can get to the quarterback and get him off his spot. With, we haven't really asked you about this as much this year, but with Brian Ellis kind of taking over for Tyson, how does does the play calling work on offense differently than last year, or is it uh, similar? T's calling it all. Okay. He, he does a good job of, um, you know, as soon as uh, as soon as the series is done, we're chiming in to see, okay, what was the defenses, what do we see, and let's make the let's make the in game adjustments that we need. We don't wait till necessarily halftime, but at the end of the series, we're coming up and saying, hey, they're doing this front wise, they're doing this coverage wise. Let's think about these next two, three, four things. But T's doing a great job of calling. I thought he did a great job in in uh, game one. Is that different than last year or similar? Um, last year, T, T called it. T called it, and Tyson and I would chime in. I chimed in every once in a while in the red zone. T, uh, Tyson would chime in uh, and some on third downs uh, and do that. But T's the play call. I mean, he's done such a great job over the last three years. He's taken a lot of pressure off me to be able to run a football team. And he's not only done a great job with the organization of the offense, but he's done a great job in game. And uh, he, and he also gives me the honor to at least bend with me, that if I see something and want to be able to make a suggestion, that he goes right to it. And I appreciate that of him. But at the end of the day, he's going to always have the final say. What do you need to do better against Stanford than you did against UNLV? Um, for us, stop the explosive plays and finish drives. 
Um, I thought that was the biggest key to create more separation against UNLV um, was, you know, we had the two plays in, in the first half, the 70 yard uh, touchdown run, and then the, the pass uh, that was completed for over 30 yards against a blown coverage. We got to eliminate those explosive plays based off unforced errors. You know, that wasn't a physical beat. Those were two assignment errors that created explosive plays. And these guys are the king of taking advantage of you when you're out of gap integrity or you blow a coverage, they are going to find it. Um, and then for us, it's about finishing drives. Um, I think about that <clears throat> Pac-12 championship game and how important it was to finish those drives in that game. That was a close ball game and touchdowns were so critical uh, in, in that game. So those are the two areas we've really got to do a, a great job of going from week one to week two. What did you see from San Diego State against Bryce Love and how did that inform what you were trying to do? Um, they committed everybody to the box, I'll, I'll say that. And their corners were left on islands. and. Um, they played the game like, okay, let's make the quarterback and the wideouts beat us, and, and they did. You mentioned a couple of linemen who were dinged up earlier, Toa, Chuma, those guys. Mm -hmm. What's your kind of confidence overall with that unit? Just seems like um, very guys. confident. It's so much different, Joey, than last year. You know, at this point in time, you, you were sitting here going, you know, if we get anybody hurt, um, it, 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 it was a bad situation. Now all of a sudden, Toa goes down in the first game. Brett Neeling goes in and really does a tremendous job. You know, all of a sudden, if you, you need to limit Austin's reps so where he doesn't play a full game, Clayton uh, Clayton Bradley goes in, does an unbelievable job. Elijah Vera Tucker's there available. You know, and Andre Vorhe, uh, Andrew Voorhees, and uh, Jalen McKenzie can both play right tackle to be able to to spell Chuma. There's just so much more depth and more answers than all of a sudden you lose one, two, three guys. And you're like, wow, where do we go now? Uh, I don't feel that this year. I feel guys that we trust and that are ready to play. Uh, how do you expect to deal with Stanford's pass rush? They think they forced an interception and a couple sacks. They got a couple sacks last week. So how are you going to yeah, deal with that? Yeah, they do. They do a really great job with their edge rushers. Uh, both 52 and 32 do a wonderful job uh, of getting to the quarterback. And then they 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 have the ability. Uh, to rush very well with four-man rush, but you watch your five- and six-man pressure, especially red zone zero, zero pressures. Um, they affect quarterbacks, and they make the, make you get the ball out of the quarterback's hands extremely quickly. Um, one, we're going to have to you know run crisp routes against man coverage. Um, we're going to have to keep the quarterback upright in protection, and then the quarterback can't flinch. He can't hesitate versus this bunch uh, because they won't be open long. Uh, they, they do a great job of recovering in coverage. And also, they're going to get to the quarterback in a hurry. And if you hesitate, uh, one, we're going to have a bad play, but two, you might get hurt. Uh, you got to get rid of the ball. When do you think you'll have a sense of how your offensive line is going to line up? When? How do you? Between now uh, and then, how do you? Um, I, by, by tomorrow, I won't make a decision on, on exactly where we'll start with. Um, so at least we know going into the game. Um, but uh, you know, I'm confident in the guys. They they all they all want to play. You know, you just got some bumps and bruises that. We try to get work one day. We try to spell one day. And uh, we'll see where we're at tomorrow. Okay. All right, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks.